Hello uh, and welcome. We are tackling the question piling up exclamation point uh, today on HackerRank. Uh, if you're doing any kind of technical interview prep, this is the place for you. Uh, per usual, I'll be going over the question, get a good understanding of it, give you all some time to try it on your own, and then I'll be going over my solution after that. I will be doing this in Python, uh, but I'll explain the logic enough that uh, if you're doing it in another, another language, it should still make sense. Here we go. There is a horizontal row of n cubes. The length of each cube is given. You need to create a new vertical pile of cubes. The new pile should follow these directions. If cube i is on top of cube j, then the side length of j must be uh, greater or equal to the side length of i. Uh, and I'll kind of show that in a more visual way. Uh, when stacking the cubes, you can only pick from either the leftmost or rightmost cube each time. Print yes if it is possible to stack the cubes. Otherwise, print no. Do not print the quotation marks. Uh, very clear on that. Um, so uh, we get some. We are given some constraints here that uh, the number of cubes is no greater than ten to the fifth, and the side length is basically as big as it can be. Uh, two to, to the thirty-one is like the the max integer in, in Python. So uh, here's an example. We're given this uh, these six numbers here, and basically we need to say whether that's possible to stack them. Uh, in this case, it's yes. And here's another situation, 1, 3, 2, where that's not possible. I'll just show the first one just so, to make clear like what's going on here. But I think more visual is better. Um, and so we have 4, 3, 2, 1, 3, and 4. And again, that's the same thing as here, 4, 3, 2, 1, 3, 4. These are the blocks in order in the, per, per the list. And we're told that we can only access, at any given time, the left and rightmost. So basically, this one and this one. Right, let's say I grab this 4 first. So that becomes our four here. And then you know that's that's no longer possible. Then now I have the three and the four to look at. Well, I definitely want to grab the four uh, because it's like the, the one that the largest one that's left over. So I'll grab this and put that on top. So this is gonna be a four. Then now I have the three and the three. I can kind of grab e either one, so I'll just grab the left one. So this one's gonna be a little bit less, so this is a three. Then between the three and the two, I definitely want to get this three, same length, three. And then the two, and then the one on top, and that's like what that's supposed to look like. And the rule is basically, if you have a block, let's say that there is a four here, and the next only the only possible thing left over is like a, a six, which is too big. So this is this is going to violate the rule. So um, there there is a possibility that our our list isn't going to work. Uh, I realize now before you go on there's an annoying part of this whole process that sometimes hacker rank will have you deal with the input output by yourself which is kind of an annoying thing because it's like an extra stuff that you just have to figure out on your own so I'm, i want to provide that for you so you're not you're not inhibited from doing the challenge so we're told uh so if i go up here we're told the kind of input format that we're going to be seeing the first line being the number of test cases and then for each test case there are two lines and so you can kind of imagine that this is going to look kind of like a for loop and that's where I'll, I'll be showing you here so here I'm having uh, the first line I'm grabbing the number of tests and I'm just doing for uh, underscore in range number of tests I'm not using this variable so I, you could say I in range but I'm not using it anyway so it doesn't matter um, and then you grab this input which actually you, I'm realizing now I don't even use but anyway you need to grab it because that's how input works um, and then you uh, I'm making a list comprehension so I'm taking the next line that line being the basically this list of, of strings but it's a it's a literal string itself that needs to be split on the space uh, that's what I'm doing here I'm splitting on space and then for oops and then for each number of that I'm converting it to integer so by the end I should have a list of integers that I can feed into a function that's more uh, typical of how we see these coding challenges and, I, and I'm calling it my function because I'm really original with my naming. Anyway, uh, I'll give you time to ch do the challenge on your own, and we'll come back with my solution. OK, so for the solution, and uh, I will reiterate the fact that you need to handle the standard input and output in order for this to work in the form of a function that I'm, I'm making here. So uh, make sure you're doing this just in case uh, there's any confusion of, on why my solution is a function. So here we go. Um, I am given a input of uh, a string of or a list of strings. Uh, sorry, a list of numbers that are the length of the cubes. 
Um, establishing some constants here, yes and no are the, the what we need to print. I like doing it that way. I think it's it's better to abstract um, your strings that are basically constant. And here I have the current cube length. So I'm setting it currently to uh, infinity. Uh, you can kind of think of this as like the floor just being like infinitely long. Um, any, anything that any other cube should be able to put be put on top of that because it's less than infinity. Um, and the way I'm doing this is I'm going to use two runners, uh, which are just pointers to the um, ends of the list, basically. Uh, and so, and, and they'll be moving, basically. Um, this is a concept that I, I had to pick up a while ago when I started learning how to do this kind of stuff. Uh, but basically, the left runner is at zero index, and the right runner is at the length of the list minus one. So that's just the end of the list. So if I were to visualize this, it would be like my left runner is here. So my left runner is at zero. And that one is my right index, like over here. So it's literally just pointing to those two, and that's how I'll, I'll treat it. All right, and basically what I'll just do is I'll just keep looping um, and moving my runner until they basically go past each other. When they go back past each other, then I know I've, I've seen everything, and that's why the for, the while loop is looking like that. Um, and the logic in here is going to be such that the second I see a mismatch, I will stop and. Uh, stop the loop basically. So after this while loop completes, if it does complete, then I know I can just print yes because I went through the whole list without any problems. Okay, so now we need to check to see if either block is uh, proper. Uh, they they both need to be proper, and by that I mean they, they both need to be e at least equal to or less than the the current cube length. So uh, if they're both larger though, then we know right away we could we don't need to check anything. So my first check here is. If the left value is greater than the current cube length and the right value is greater, then both blocks are too large and it's not possible. So we can print no and also just return and stop the function right then and there. Uh, the else, which I realize now the else statement isn't totally necessary, but I'll just keep the logic there. Why not? Um, and you, then we need to determine which side is the largest. So let's, uh, let's grab this here. So, so my, here's my infinite floor of purple. And then my first block would be... Uh, one of the one of them because it's a you know, one of the fours. I'm going to default to the left as in case they're equal. I'll just default to the left for now. So I'll make a, a block that is four here. And then this runner would uh, effectively move over to here. To sorry here. So it's like kind of the idea about how the runners are working. But anyway, so the, so uh, whenever we do this, we need to make sure that whatever block gets put on top of the previous block, it needs to be the it needs to be proper. But also, when we look at our where our runners are, we need to always pick the one that's larger. So if we if we um, if we picked three, for example, in this situation, then we would be missing out on the fact that the four is a better better place because it's it's uh, equal in size. So we should always look at whatever between the two that are um, possible. We should always look at for the largest one. So that that's why in our the code here. I need to determine which side is largest. So once I know which one it is, either it's the left one. So if the left if the left one is equal to or larger, again that's the default for if they're equal. If they're if the left one is larger, then we are going to work with the left one. Um, but we also need to make sure we don't fall into any problems here. So imagine, for example, that let's say the, the left one was uh, uh, five, for example. So if this one was a five, then I would definitely want to look at the largest one. And the largest one is five, and I would see right away that it's not going to work because a five obviously can put a five on here is too large. That's not going to work. So um, that's actually information that we want to have right away, though, because uh, when we see this, when we see that the the left value is, um, if it's not, if it's greater than the cube length, then uh, we we don't want to we don't want to uh, use it basically. So this is going to be uh, it's kind of invalid. In in, the, in this case, with the five, it'd be invalid. Um, if we pick the left, if, sorry, if we pick the right side, then the same logic applies. We want to make sure that it's proper. And if anything does, if none of these work, then we can say one one side is too large, and uh, we need to print no. So it's going to not be possible in that situation. Uh, and that would be we want to catch that early, basically, and that's what we're doing here. Sorry. And so we see here that the left runner is. Um, well, first I reassign the current cube length to the, that that value, and then I increment my runner one to the, from the left. I think 
plus one, and on the right I need a minus one. That's all. Okay, so let's see how this runs. Run some code. All right, looks like it's working okay for this test case. Let's see if we submit the code. And it is looking okay. Excellent day. Okay, so uh, time complexity here. This is. This is, it, it, because of how this logic goes, this while loop is the biggest one, and this is big O of n by default, because it's going to be, uh, the second it goes past each other is when it stops, and then you're done. You've, lo you've looked at each element, and that's as efficient as it can really get. So this one isn't really about time complexity, this is more about logic. Um, or at least that's what I feel, this, this challenge is about logic. Um, I don't think it could be quicker than big O of n, because you, you have to check each element. Um, yeah. So, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you like this kind of content, make sure to like, subscribe, all the good things. And I will see you next time. Take care.